Salams, you're watching the International Daily Roundup, People's Dispatch's selection of some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. Gustavo Petro and Francia Marquez to be the candidates for Colombia's historic pact coalition. A new report indicates 80% of Africa's rural population lacks safely managed drinking water. A Communist Party activist in Swaziland has been detained and assaulted. And Algerian political prisoner Fethi Gares has been released. Our first story is from Colombia, where the left wing historic pact coalition will field Gustavo Petro and Francia Marquez as its presidential and vice presidential candidates in the May elections. The duo obtained the highest votes in the primaries held on the 13th of March. According to the latest opinion polls, the unity ticket of the progressive forces is favoured to win the upcoming presidential election on May 29th with about 47% of the voting population indicating its preference. Speaking at the announcement, Petro said, and I quote, Today we have reached a definitive moment. We have achieved an undeniable triumph. Millions of Colombians want the country to change, and today they are the majority. Petro is a former mayor of Bogota and was also the progressive candidate in the 2018 elections. Francia Marquez is a lawyer and environmental leader and a native of Causa. Marquez has stated that she will work on addressing the environmental crisis and the reparation of the rights of Colombian Afro-descendant communities. In 2018, Marquez won the top prize recognizing Nature's Defenders, the Goldman Environment Prize, and at the time she also gave a speech honoring the ancestral knowledge of her community. The elections in Colombia follow a disastrous pandemic during which the administration of right-wing President Ivan Duque was widely criticized. There has also been a huge amount of violence against activists and social society leaders. 80% of the rural population on the African continent lacks safely managed drinking water. As much as 75% of the same population lacks safely managed sanitation and as many as 70% lack basic hygiene services. These details were revealed in a special report of the WHO and UNICEF Joint Monitoring Programme for Water Supply, Sanitation and Hygiene. 40% of the population in urban Africa also lacks safely managed drinking water. The UNICEF and the WHO warned that the Sustainable Development Goals targets will not be met in Africa unless a 12-fold increase can be achieved in the rate of expansion of access to safely managed drinking water. Safely managed sanitation requires a 20-fold increase to meet SDG targets and basic hygiene services need as much as 42 times increase. In Swaziland, Bongi Nkambule an activist of the Communist Party of Swaziland was allegedly abducted by the police from the capital city of Mbabane on, on the afternoon of Wednesday, March the 23rd. He was reportedly released at night, but also assaulted. At the time, he was picked up by a truck of policemen. Nkambule, who is in his mid-30s, was return, returning from the Manzini court, where charges against two other activists were being heard. The other two activists were arrested on the 22nd of May 2021, on accusations of vandalizing and burning the Manzini police station. The said incident occurred after police forces attacked the memorial service for a student, Thabani in Moye. The student's dead body was found earlier that month, four days after he was allegedly killed by the police, who then tried to cover up the murder. The protests against police brutality in the aftermath of the student's killing snowballed into unprecedented countrywide anti-monarchist and pro-democracy protests by June, which for the first time swept across rural Swaziland as well. And finally, Algerian opposition figure and leader of the leftist Democratic and Social Movement Party, Fethi Gares, was granted an early release from prison on Tuesday, the 22nd of March. Gares was arrested on June 2021 and sentenced to a two-year term in jail in January on charges of insulting the head of state, inciting an armed assembly, contempt for a legal authority, and dissemination of information that could harm the national interest. According to reports, the 47-year-old activist left the al Haraj prison after the Algiers Court of Appeal awarded him a revised sentence of one year in prison, including six months suspended, during an appeal trial which began on the 8th of March and concluded on the 22nd. The prosecution at the trial had requested a three-year prison sentence. Garez was active in the anti-establishment Hirak protests, which first started in 2019 against then-President Abdulaziz Bouteflika. This was after the President announced that he would seek a fifth consecutive term in power. The nationwide protests ultimately forced Bouteflika to resign and ended his authoritarian regime after almost 30 years in power. 
the weekly Iraq demonstrations, continued against the subsequent government as well, with protesters demanding substantial structural, political and economic reform. Protesters have been demanding the ouster of all politicians, army officials and business elite from the Bouteflika era who continued to hold important positions of power. Even though several members of the former re regime, including prime ministers and other ministers, have since been prosecuted for corruption and sentenced, there are many who have escaped prosecution altogether. According to data released by the CNLD, over 300 Algerians are still being detained in prison for their participation or links with the Hirak movement or for their involvement in other related campaigns advocating for civil liberties and human rights. That's all we have on this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more details on all of these stories, head over to our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and do give us a follow on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We'll be back again tomorrow. See you then. Goodbye.